everybody. Welcome. It's Free Tip Friday on Beadshop.com and I am Kate Richberg. And um, today we're going to talk chain, clasps, and wire. I'm going to jump on over here onto my phone real quick while people are jumping on to make sure that you can see me and that I can see you and then we'll get started. Let's see. And I'm scrolling and here I am. I can see you guys. You can see me. Let me make sure that my volume is off. And yes, great. I can see everyone. Awesome. I'm going to make sure I've got my feed there so I can see you guys. Hi everyone. It's great to have you. Hello, hello. Um, I'm going to move this over to get all of my devices taken care of here. Yes, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Well, great. It's great to have everybody here on this Friday here at beadshop.com. Um, you know, the reason for doing um, this uh, Free Tip Friday today is Kara came up to me while we were working on our, free, on our Facebook Live for Wednesday. And she said, you know, Kate, people have a lot of questions um, about clasps, clasps and chain, along with the wire. And she said, it would be a great Free Tip Friday episode. And I thought, that's a great uh, Free Tip Friday episode for this week. And it kind of dovetails a little bit on um, what we did on Facebook Live on Wednesday. You'll remember with Emily, we did these great um, Stones of Wisdom pieces, and I had this piece that I was working on during the broadcast as well. So we're going to talk about all um, a whole bunch of really cool uh, closures and stuff. But first, let's see who we've got. We've got so many people from all over the place. It's great. Good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Lorraine, it's great that you're up and awake from Australia. So hello down under. Hello uh, to the north, to our Canadian friends. Hello, Gita, our wonderful bead show. She's on as beadshop.com from Denmark. Um, I hope that everybody is doing well. That's great. In the Northern Hemisphere, happy first full day of summer. Uh, to those of you in the South, I guess your, your, uh, your opposite season, your, um, winter season, right, is starting. It's the different, uh, different, so yesterday was solstice. So it always, um, it always surprises me to think that it's warm at Christmas where you are and cold at Christmas where we are here up in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, it's great to see everyone. Hello from Switzerland. Hello from Oregon. Uh, my mom is watching. Hello, mama. Um, it's great to have everyone here. Well, great. The gang's all here. So I'm going to jump in and talk to you a little about what I've got in front of me. Oh, Oh, I see Art, and I'm sure Tammy's going to jump on um, from uh, Michigan. I know you guys are watching us from, and uh, south of Pittsburgh. Oh, thanks, my earrings. Thanks, Kathy. Um, we are, um, I'm working on some new classes and things, so uh, this is a new, uh, some kind of a new thing I've been working on. So thank you very much from that. That's great. Um, all right. Well, I love it. I love that we are making the world a smaller, friendlier place, one bead at a time, right? That's our goal here at beadshop.com. Um, so it's great to be broadcasting out to you all, all over the world. So thank you. Thank you uh, for joining me. So let's get this show on the road and turn this camera around. Um, oh, and I see people and their pets are watching. Yes, Alfie, I'll post a, a photo uh, a little bit later. You know, you can follow our kitty cat, Alfred T. Pickles. You can follow him right on Instagram. He has his own Instagram account. And if I do say so myself, it is darling. But right now, Karen's holding him, um, doing the web with one hand and holding a sleeping kitten in the other. It's pretty cute. Pretty, pretty cute. All right. So let me get my glasses on and let me turn things around. Okay. So let's take a look at what I've got here in front of me as I move things around. So bear with me. It's a little... It's a little, uh, little bit of movement here, but there we go. You guys can kind of see 
you guys can kind of see what I've got going on here. I'm going to move things around a little bit because always on Free Tip Friday, I am always, um, I'm always, you know, I'm flying alone here. Brandwin is busy doing inventory stuff, so um, I uh, kind of do the camera solo. So thanks for bearing with me here. Oh, and Gita, thanks for putting up Alfred's Instagram. He's pretty cute. I try and um, post some pretty cute Instagram stuff for him. Let me see if I can get this nice and straight. There we go. Oh my gosh, people are coming from all over today, which is awesome. I love it. Alrighty, there we go. That looks pretty even. You guys can see my hands pretty well here. Let me get this screen out of screen, out of, um, out of the way. Let me put it up here so I can see your questions. And I'm going to put this one over here so I can see your other questions. And I think, I think I've got it. Alrighty. Um, hopefully we'll post a picture. A kitty, yeah, kitty works, the kitty is working very hard on the web design. Karen is showing Alfred um, so many things um, about working on the web. So <laughs> he's going to be, you know, it's completely appropriate for Silicon Valley that we have, um, you know, a cat also working on our website along with Karen. So <laughs> anyways, yes, yes, yes. So funny. Our little Alfred. He's a good boy. Um, but we are getting some work done, but it's, it's hard. All we want to do is play with that cat all day. All right. So let me talk to you a little bit though down. Let's get down to business here. So um, I wanted to show you, these are a couple of free tip Fridays, um, back from back in the day. Um, and there's a couple of ways that you can attach chain to projects, right? We can, of course, use a wire wrap and you guys can see here, let me tighten this in so you guys can actually see this connection. Um, this connection here, you can see that I've wire wrapped from the, um, from this link to this bead and up to this keyholes chain. Okay. And then on the other side, let me get it in, in gear here. I connected it to chain and you can see that I've strung this with, uh, Softlex crimp cover, wire guard, and then between that wire guard and this chain, I also made a, um, like a wire wrap bead unit. So a wire wrap bead unit is a great way to connect two pieces, something to chain, okay? Um, it's a great way to do it. So another way to do it, this is our little keyholes chain. And can you see, I did this, it's so hard to see, but I'm going to, get it really kind of up close and personal so you can see it. It's blurry, Ma. Okay, let me, um, are you guys seeing it that it's blurry? Let me see if I can, hmm, it might be our connection, or you know what? Bear with me here just a moment. If it's blurry, it also may be the lens. So bear with me here just a second and let me clear off that lens real quick. Um, and make sure that it's clear enough. So bear with me here, you guys. You're going to see it go dark for a second. Dark, dark, dark as I clean this lens. And maybe that's clearer. So let's see. Is that better? Let me get my hands in there. I always try and clear it off before I start. Um, and I didn't. Just when I do the close-ups, let me go back a little bit more. That might be better. I just want you guys to be able to see pretty well. All right. Okay. Let's see, and let me put this back in focus here. And how are we doing? Better? Is that, is that looking good okay? Alrighty. So you can see here, and I'm checking it on my phone too. Looks pretty clear. It also may be our connection's a little bit fuzzy today. So, um, but I think that looks actually a little bit better. Can you see here, you guys, how I strung this? This is on, um, this is strung on Softlex right here. And you can see the Softlex just connects to this tiny 
little chain here. So without a jump ring, without a wire wrap. And it's almost seamless, okay? So it looks good there. Then I also used it on this side. I um, did that same thing. You can see it even a little bit better. Our soft flex crimp to right there. And then to this wheat chain, again, it's that connection of wire guard into the wheat chain here. Okay, so uh, when you string with soft flex, essentially just using the wire guard or slipping it through the end of chain works out really, really well. Okay, so um, let's take a look at um, connecting with some jump rings and some other things with wire. Okay, so let me get rid of this stuff. Let me make this a little bit bigger here. Yeah, I'm trying to... I don't know why our focus is a little funny today, but that's what we're getting. Maybe I'll shed a little more light on things too. Maybe that'll help. Let me play around with my settings here for just a second. Um, bear with me here. Resolution looks good. Zoom looks good. Well, we are just going to go with what we've got. Okay. There we go. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at some of the chain I've got going on here. I'm going to bring this into frame. And let's take a look at some of the different things we've got. Um, we have so many clasps. I'm actually going to get the tray out of here, and I'm just going to put the chain in. Uh, we've got so many different types of chain and so many different types of clasps uh, for you to use with them. This is our run-along chain. It's kind of a heavier Rolo type chain. This is our wheat chain, also kind of heavy. These two guys, I think, sometimes pose a challenge because you're not really sure what size of jump ring to use with these guys. Um, and the wire, um, the jump ring that I'm going to use um, is, I'm going to, these are our, um, our thick, our heavy uh, jump rings. There are 16 gauge I think it, they're the six millimeter. These are from Nun Design that we carry, and I just love them, love them, love them. I think it's a perfect, perfect jump ring for these heavier chains. And so for something like this, this run-along chain, very simply, let me grab the end out here, and it's this one here, okay? All I need to do, and my default clasp today is going to be our swivel, okay? And we carry our swivel clasp in the large and the small swivel. And I've put them in here for you, both of them in for scale, so you can see it. Um, the small, let me get my, my gauge here, my um, millimeter gauge. The small swivel in length what I like to say door to door from tip of the clasp to the bottom of the ring is about 15 millimeters. Okay? About that. It's kind of hard for you to see. Then the large swivel in length is about 17 millimeters. Okay? So both of those uh, work really well for closures. I'm going to use the small swivel because I think it works really nicely in the scale of what we've got going on here with these. So just to very simply start, I'm using our bent chain nose in my right hand and my dominant hand, my regular chain nose in my non-dominant hand, at least for this operation. And to attach it, you guys, all I do is I'm holding my rings. Whoops, let me hold them in frame. <laughs> Sorry about that one on one side and one on the other. My um, bent chain acts like a little pair of fingers so I can just get right in there, open it up, add that chain on, 
add the clasp on and see how heavy the ring is you guys I think a lot of times people are worried that your jump ring is literally going to jump off of your piece because you know it's it's a jump ring it has an opening but these heavy gauge ones from Nun Design that we carry um, really um, really are sturdy and especially if they're closed nice and evenly and and tightly you're going to be in really good shape so I'm going to close it up here close and I'm going to go back and forth back and forth and close okay sorry I'm a little out of out of frame there let me get this, move this back a little bit and get this up a little bit there we go so you guys can see that okay then when you look at it if I hold it to the side so you guys can see this see how that jump ring is actually closed it's not open at all and if I kind of pull on it and tug on it a little bit you know your jewelry you know if it gets caught on something or whatever that heavy jump ring isn't going to go anywhere so if you really you know detail it closed nicely this is a great way to go okay same thing you guys with this wheat chain can you see the wheat chain here when it's cut the wheat chain kind of smushes, that's a technical term, kind of smushes together. It's kind of hard to see on the end there. So you really need to make sure when you cut the wheat chain that you cut the full link away because the wheat chain is kind of put together in kind of an S shape and then an S shape in the opposite direction and that kind of what makes the, the what we call the wheat kind of design on there. So I'm going to get my cutter and really clip away so I really free that opening. So there's my little kind of partially leftover bit of chain and I'm going to cover it with my finger to kind of um, make sure that the chain doesn't go flying into my head and I'm going to clip. Okay. And we're still looking. We do have oval. I'm going to talk about the oval jump rings in just a second. We carry them in some different sizes, um, and we're looking for the heavier ones as well. So we'll be carrying some of the ovals, but I haven't found an oval jump ring in the right gauge, in the heavier gauge, quite yet. But it's coming. I promise. I promise it's coming. So you can see how I opened up so that link is nice and open and ready to go. Okay? So, um... Thanks. You know, I have a new um, a new camera holder today, so that's probably what's making things uh, a little blurrier. So I'll try and hold it a little further away. Okay. Um, so maybe that's better. Thanks for bearing with me with this, and I appreciate your feedback on it. Um, for this wheat chain. I like using our five millimeter jump rings and I'm going to use them in these antique brass. And Leanne, you're asking about the long round nose pliers. Yes, you bet. I have them coming very shortly. So you'll see them probably in about the next month or so. Okay, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to try and get this in frame. and open it up. Attach it to the end of that wheat just there and then choose a clasp. Let's go for this swivel right here. Okay and again hold it. Whoops. I said hold it here. There we go. Hold it, hold it, and close it up. Okay, there we go. And see, we want to make sure when you check your jump ring, you want to make sure and check it from all sides. This one's a little off. So it looked closed from one plane, but not on the other. So let me close it up 
There we go. I know I love the swivel clasps too. They're really great. I really like them for bracelets. I know Emily and I were talking about it on Wednesday, but I just really um, love uh, love the way this swivel works. And you can see I used it, I think I used it on one of these. No, I guess I didn't. I used, um, I used toggles on those. But I also really like these for, um, for bracelets as well, because look at how nice and um, smooth that swivel is. I really, really love it. So there's that guy there. Okay. So I'm going to leave this because we're going to come back to this in a second, this heat chain, this closure. So I've got the closure on the Rolo, what we call our run along, and I've got the closure on this wheat here. Okay. So let's talk about chain that's a little more of a pain in the behind. Okay. These smaller chains, I love them ever so, okay, but the small chains are difficult to deal with because, well, they're small, right? So this is our teeny satellite chain, and we also have our um, bitty dots chain right here, both of which I love, both of which are teeny, okay? A great one for both of these is we have for the bitty dots as well as for our baby dots. We've got two sizes of ball chain here. Let me take that one away for a second. Well, this is what we call our dog bone clasp. It's the traditional small little clasp um, for um, ball chain right so this is a no-brainer you remember how to do this when you had like a I don't know some kind of ID tag or something like that right it's like this little thing and it just catches right on and comes right off like that and this dog bone comes in works for both the bitty dot and the baby dot chain okay so super easy right but what if you wanted a ring on the ends of these, okay, rather than just a necklace portion. So these are, and this is when Facebook Live or Free Tip Friday, when it's live and I haven't practiced, is going to be really hilarious for all of you <laughs> because, let me tighten in on this so you guys can see it, because um, these fold over crimps that we carry, and we carry them in a little baggie like this in all the different flavors, um, these can be kind of a pain in the you know what to put on but once you use them um, they work really really well so let me go with the smaller one first okay and just the way that you do it and no glue is needed really um, but in order to hang on to everything see how I have this piece of chain it's kind of sticking out beyond the closure there I do that so I can hang on to both of these pieces so it's nice and firm in my hand. Then I'm just going to very gently with my chain nose plier, kind of hold it there, I'm going to crimp it around like so. I can do that also with the tip of my tool, like so. You could also use, I bet you could, I've got them right here, your Zuron, um crimper, right? Because you could get it right there into that oval and that oval will just help you close it all around. Okay, and let me face it towards you guys so you can kind of see it. See how it's kind of ovaling that sucker around right there? And look at how nice and tight and closed that is, right? A clamshell. Um, Sharon, I'm not sure. The clamshell end tip, if it's one that closes around, you probably could use it, um, but I don't think it's quite as sturdy, though I would have to try it out for sure and, and check for you. So I think that this is a little bit of a sturdier connection. And now see that bit of chain that's sticking out there? I'm just going to come in and very carefully with my wire cutter cut that away. Okay, so you can see 
how nice that looks, that closure looks. Nice and even and clean. See that? Now let's do it for the other one. The other one should fit in there pretty well as well. I'm just going to clip this away. So I've got that guy. And let's look at this one. Uh, let me get another fold over crimp out of my baggie. But that way then you can connect with a jump ring and we'll do that next. So just bear with me here. So again, here's our bigger one. I'm putting it on the inside there and you can see it's it's a little bit bigger right this is called the fold over crimp that I'm using and this is our I'm using the larger dot chain what we call our baby dots but it's called fold over crimp and I think it's in our crimps category on the website so see even starting out with that Zuron crimper see how I can get it let me move my fingers so you guys can see it. I have it in the, uh, let me get a little bit bigger here. See how I can get it right in there and press it. That helps me control it a little bit more. Yep. And then I'm going to come back in with my flat plier. But this is really on there. It's not going to go anywhere. And that little extra ball that's at the end that was sticking out that I was using to hang on to it, I can just very carefully clip it away and see how it's really, it's really, really, really on there. It's not going anywhere. Okay? And it is a nicer, I think a really nice professional closure. Then the ring that I would use, did I get silver ovals? I have a shiny silver oval. That one would work. Or, um, what I like even better, uh, that's the oval. This is also the shiny silver oval. We could use just our regular 4 millimeter. Um, I have this in copper. But I really like this oval, and we have them in the antique. Let me get this. Let me get this guy out. Whoops. And let me get the clasp I have. Again, not in the right finish, but we do carry it in the antique too. I just grabbed the shiny. But you can see that um, tiny lobster claw clasp we have would work really well with this. And then here, and open and put that guy on, put that guy on, and that's when this oval uh, jump ring really shines. So it's small, but it's also mighty. It closes really nicely, and that join, you guys, is on the side, so it's not going to pull through, okay? And obviously you would match your metal finishes, but this is what I had in front of me right here. Okay, so that's the baby dots chain. Okay, yeah, I like the look you get with these fold over crimps as well, Trish. I think they look really nice and clean and professional. And I love ball chain. I think it kind of has a little bit of an edgier look to it. You know, um, I just, I love it. And I think it gets overlooked a lot, especially if you're making something that's just super delicate. Maybe you're you know what would look really good with these are those new Nun Design um, pendants, the long pendants and the um, round, thick um, beads that we have or pendant beads for them. They would look amazing on these. Um, if someone, I don't want to go grab them, but you guys will see them on the website. They're super, I think they're really super. And I bet, you know what? I bet if, bear with me here just a second, I'm going to see if someone will grab them for me. Let's see. Um, I'm going to text Cara <laughs> right here, live on air. Um, new nun pendant. Let's see if they um, bead, please. And let's see. In silver. Let's see if uh, 
if Kara has her phone in her pocket. She might. And if they come in, I'll show you guys how they look. They're pretty killer. And on this ball chain, I think they'd look, um, they, I think they'd look really, really cool. Yeah, and I think ceramic pendants, I think they'd look cool on there too. Yeah, Leanne, it's the thick bar pendant and the thick round. Um, I just think it would look pretty cool with that. So we'll see if, uh, if someone carries them into my office. But let's continue on with this chain, okay? Here is the, um, this is our, yes, look at Kara. I said, I bet Kara will have her phone in her pocket. You're the best. <laughs> Thanks, Kara. Look at that. Here they are. So before I move on to those, look at how, um, look at how great those look. Let me get my arm out of the way. Come on now. Just super simple for summer. I'm going to make one and wear this this weekend. Look at that long one. Look at how cute that looks. Oh my gosh, I love it. And then this one, for the smaller one, would look great on the bitty dots. Look at how cute that is. Go on right in there. Yes, I love it. I'm gonna, I am going to, yeah, you could totally stamp this. Totally. And this is gonna be my weekend, my weekend wearing necklace, I think. Yeah. They're really, really good. I love them. And you could go like three in line or something. I don't know. But they're nice and chunkola. I love them. And you could um, do mixed metals on this. We've got this Bitty Dots chain in, um, in different finishes. So I think it would totally work. Right? I think it would be good. Um, okay. So it would also fit. Would it fit on this satellite? This teeny satellite would also fit. The whole size is really big and generous, so yeah, it does fit in there without a, without a problem. And I might even like it all the more on this chain, right? So they're pretty fun. They're pretty fun. So let me, uh, so that it would be the same thing, you guys, for this satellite chain and this teeny satellite. The fold over crimp, what I would do is I would put that chain where the satellite isn't. We call that little bead the satellite. And then I just fold it over just like we did with the other one and add a clasp on the end. It would look really amazing, I think, with it. So I think that's the one I'm gonna I'm gonna do. I kind of like the mixed metals and I like the satellite chain with it. So maybe I'll I'll make that a little bit later. We also have these ribbon crimps. These guys are also from Nun Design. They're a little bit larger. Okay, so let's say that you wanted to do multiple strands of things of this chain. Whoops, come, come here. I could put these guys all in there and maybe even, I don't know, another piece of chain. All of this teeny chain could go in there like that and then it could get folded over, okay? Just like this. So it's a great way also to close it up. And I see Emily's here. Hello, Emily Miller. It's great to see you. Excellent. I'm terribly glad you're here. But see how you can just do those multiple strands out of one clasp. And this is the three millimeter um, fold over clasp. And it would look uh, terrific. T terrific for that. Okay. Um, I don't know, maybe I should just close them up. And again, I like using, whoops, let me get it into frame. I kind of like using this Zeron cutter, or not Zeron cutter, but the Zeron crimper to kind of help fold it over like this. And on this side, maybe like that, getting it right in there. Pulling that chain down and then just giving it that little bit of a hug and that see how let me turn it to the side see how the the crimping plier the notch or the loop or the oval in that crimping plier helps you catch this chain all together there we go look at that then all you would do is can finesse it a little bit more if you need to. 
then all you would do is just um cut cut all of this excess off, right? This one, this one, and this one. There we go. Now you're ready to add a clasp on the end. And look at how all three of these are just coming out of there. I think it looks really cool. And you could, let's say, look at this. I love this designing on the fly right here. I had something completely different in mind. But look at how you could graduate this chain and put, like, your little pieces. You could have this one hang down. You could put a charm or a briolette or something there. And then... Uh, have it all graduate. Wouldn't that be cool? And remember how Emily talked about on um, Facebook Live on Wednesday how she was designing on the bust, on the little mannequin bust that we had? This would be a great way to hang it on the mannequin bust so you can graduate it really easily. But look at how cool that looks. I really like it. And then you could connect your clasp right there to the end. Um, and it would also be great, Trish, for making chain tassels. I agree. I think it would look really cool. So this is a great way to um, to put that piece together as well. And I'll probably finish this off air and we'll post this. I'm not sure about length and stuff, but I'll play around with that um, a little bit later. Um, there's a couple more things I want to show you guys before... Uh, before we part ways, yes, design on Ming on our on our um, mannequin. Yes, we we've named her Ming. I'm not sure why, but she's always been named Ming. Um, so here's this. Let me push this aside. Let me push this aside for the moment, and let me bring in this piece that I had on um, Facebook Live with Emily, right? And how I would close this up now. Earlier, uh, when I was working with Emily on this piece, you saw me just do some quick wire wrapping on Wednesday, right? Pretty fast and simple and easy. Um, Emily did, I think, a beautiful job on the um, necklaces that she made. They are sitting here uh, in our completed projects, and I really want to put them on because I love them so much. I think they're awesome. I'm on a little bit of close range here. Sorry about that for this wire wrapping. Um, but bear with me here while I attach. I'm going to attach one more of these long pearls. Let me get this into frame. <laughs> My mom. How about stamping a G on that round thing? <laughs> That's hilarious, Mama. Well, you never know when that a little G on a round thing might show up for you. That's funny. That's right. You know, I always say that you, whatever your mom requests jewelry-wise, you always have to make it, right? So I'm, uh, I guess I'll have to stamp a G on there when I take it to my studio. Okay, let me close this up. My wire wrapping skills seem to have left me today, right? Yes, and Gita says, yes, a G please for Gita, right? G's all the way around for everybody with a G initial. For Gita and Gwen. Okay, there we go. And let me close this up. Yeah, my mom's been the recipient of a lot of jewelry over the years, and I'm glad that she still isn't tired of my jewelry. Yes, and a G for Ginger, too. We've got so many G's here. There we go. Come on now. Get in there. Let me go from this side. There might be something blocking this hole. If there is, sometimes I can get it through with the wire, but I might have to use the bead reamer. So let me choose another one. Sometimes that just happens. Let's try this one. Though I need to straighten out this wire, because Look at that, that's disgraceful right there. Yeah, I love these stick pearls. I love them. These are a um, pearl, like I was telling you guys on Wednesday, 
that we haven't had in so long. Um, and we got them from our vintage dealer. Um, and he had some, um, gosh, I'm really fumbling today. Sorry, you guys. Let me try this again. Yes, so many G's. And for Grace, so many G's. There we go. Let's really straighten this out. Take a moment. Put this on. There we go. Alrighty. And let me make that last wire up bead loop here. Yeah, these, I just, I cannot stand how much I love them. I think they're so good. So something like this, I just want to show you guys here the way that we could um, connect let me do some measuring so I know what I'm doing here. Let me do this. Okay. Um, with this wire wrap loop, I'm close to six inches right there. So I'm going to do one more closure. So bear with me here because I did want to show you how I might mix this in. Let me get a little more in frame. There we go. I could also, you can see you guys how I have all of this extra wire right here. I could just continue my wrapping these stick pearls are perfect for it. All the way around. noisy pearls against the desk. There we go. So I just have a nice little wire embellishment just around one. Okay, look kind of cool I think. So let me tighten that up. There we go. So that's, what did I say, that's about five and a half inches there. Let's wire wrap one more of these guys on there. And then I'll show you. We'll just go ahead and connect uh, with that wheat chain. That looks like a nice pearl, though. This one's even nicer, so let me grab another one. These are the, um, the green and brown, that 9 to 12 millimeter. There we go. That pearl's perfect for it. That I really, really love. Also new... Um, we're going to have some more pearls coming in. I've got some brand new, um, we have a great project, a float um, project that I'm going to be doing in July. We have um, some really fun, let me get this out of frame real quick so I can see it while I'm wrapping it. We have some really fun um, new products coming in, the bullion wire, we've got new... Um, silk that's coming up that we're going to be um, debuting. So we've got a whole bunch of new cool stuff that's just going to be crying out for more pearls. And I don't know about you, but I love freshwater pearls a lot. Um, and then the leather and pearl um, project, we're doing that next week on Facebook Live. So uh, I guess the end of June and in the beginning of July are all about pearls. June is, um, the birthstone for June is pearls, so it's a great time to do it. So I'm going to do my um, wire wrap loop here on the end. Oh good, I'm glad Kim you're excited about the um, float project. I love making floats and I'm going to teach you how I do my multiple strand float with just a single clasp. It was um, something I used to teach at bead shop when we were a brick and mortar, so I'm really excited to bring it back. So I'm going to, um, I'm just going to take this clasp off the end here because I need to measure it. So I want to make sure that I get everything exactly right. And this is a cute, quick way to incorporate wire wrapped pieces and chain all together. So remember how I cut that piece of wheat chain from earlier? I've got it right there. Okay. And um, 
I'm going to hold it there, and now I'm just going to wire wrap it closed. So I'm going to wire wrap it, wire wrap it, and you can see, sorry, I know it's super close. I'm trying out a new camera stand, and I think this is definitely not the right camera stand for what I'm doing so close up, but I'll get it. Well, we'll keep working on it. I can also, since I have extra wire here, I'm just going to wire wrap this around just for fun so there's a little bit of wire embellishment on two of the pearls. Okay. There we go. Got a little bit of wire across there, which is cool. Okay. And Gita, oh great, good. I'm glad you guys like floats. That's awesome. Uh, and Ginger, I say yes. Cut up that six strand freshwater pearl necklace. I'm telling you, if it's just languishing in your jewelry box, then it's doing no good to you. Think about the joy it will give you when you wear it. So you know what? Revamp it and wear it. That's what I want to say. Okay. So I've got these guys here. So now let's wrap it around. Okay. Oh, and you're welcome, Leanne. I'm glad you like all of these fun projects that we're doing. So I'm going to just wrap this around. And there's a question, uh, Deanna, about what's a float. A, it's a float necklace that has thread and, um, so the thread's exposed between the beads, right? So you've got a bead, a length of thread, another bead. Um, and so sometimes they can pose a little bit of a challenge to you uh, when you're working with them. But I like, um, I have some really great tips to create those float necklaces. So that's going to come, I think it's coming at the end of July, I think, are the floats. So I'm excited. I'm excited on, on those. So let me clip this away, this extra, and then I'll kind of show you what I was doing. I kind of did a, a kind of a dorky measurement there, but let me... Uh, let me just clip that away and I've got a little more control. Okay. Yep, yeah, it's been called the Tin Cup Necklace. That's right, from way back from the movie Tin Cup. Um, that came out in the late 90s. That was a big boom for beads, for the bead biz back then. So this makes a really great multiple wrap bracelet, right? So there's one wrap and then this comes around. And I have my second wrap, you can see right here. See, check that out. So it's pretty, um, it's pretty fun. So I need to actually, I think, take a little bit away. Let me measure this and see what I've got, um, measurement wise to see where I am. Um, let's see. This is six, uh, six inches, 12, 14, and then I put the clasp. It's almost and the loop, it's probably almost 15 inches, which is a little too long for my wrist. So I'm going to take away the length of the clasp, and it's about there. Okay. Yeah, the float's going to be fun. I'm actually um, designing it right now, almost as we speak, <laughs> but it's going to be fun. I'm going to use some uh, semi-precious, some glass beads. It's going to be great. It's a real classic, um, and you can kind of make it as fun as, and funky as you want, but we're going to be knotting, doing knots with that, and I think you guys are really, really going to dig it. Okay. So let's see if I measured this correctly. I'm going to go ahead and put our little friend back on the end here. This guy. Come on. And again, with that wheat chain, see how I opened up that link so it's really easy for it to connect. And I'm going to get this guy. This time I'm holding my bent chain nose in my left hand, but it was next to my left hand, so that's where I grabbed it. I'm going to close it up. Okay. And... Let's bring this around, and yep, that's going to be just fine, but I want my, let me do this, I'm going to take it off a frame and then put it on my wrist, 
and then bring it back in here. Let me see if I can. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. I'm struggling off camera trying to get my bracelet on. Hang on one second. It's hard when you can't see things anymore. There you go. There it's on. Just like that. Okay? And it's a fun, simple, um, simple, two little strander. Great for, um, I don't know, great for stacking. You know how we like to stack our pieces here. You could also make it a little longer and make it a necklace. So again, yeah, super simple, you guys. You know, sometimes just keeping it simple is a great way to go. So we've got this here. And what did I do? What else did I do? We did some closures with this, the Rolo chain. We did some closures, multiple closures with this fold over. Oops, uh, sorry, the camera, I tipped the camera forward. Sorry about that. Um, with these guys here, right? Like that. And I could add this maybe piece to that there. And then we did some simple, simple um, connections here with the um, with the uh, dog or with the baby dots, the dot chain, which is pretty cool. So it's pretty easy. Okay, so that's it. It couldn't be more simple, but I think these are great uh, simple pieces for the start of summer. Um, I used Mary, I used a 24 gauge wire for this and you can watch even more of this, um, segment on our last Wednesday's Facebook live. Um, it was a lot of fun and we really, really delved into it. So this isn't too bad of a body of work for, um, for a uh, free tip Friday and how heavy you're asking how heavy Kim are these they're heavy enough to be substantial but not so heavy that they're going to be uncomfortable to wear okay so um, so I think it it will uh, it'll hang nicely you could put even several of these on a piece and I don't think that they will be too heavy at all it'll be great so next week um, we're back with pearls and leather. Um, Emily has a beautiful um, sample. Emily and Janice got together and did those samples. And then coming up in July, like I said, end of July, we'll be doing that float necklace. Um, I have a new looming project for you. Um, we've got some really fun things um, coming up on those. Oh, and Cody, your question was, can we solder onto these pendants? <coughs> Pardon me. We actually can't because they're plated. Uh, soldering won't really work on these. But you could definitely stamp on them. Okay? So I'm going to turn this camera around and sign off and say goodbye to you guys. So here comes the camera around to me. All right, let me get in there. There we are. Here I am. There we are. All righty. Um, Fantastic. Thanks so much, you guys, for joining me. And I will see you guys on Facebook Live on Wednesday. And uh, with all of that fun stuff we're doing with the pearls and leather. And look for a wrap-up of this Free Tip Friday on our blog. I'll have Karen take a photo of some of the finished pieces. I'll go ahead and finish that um, chain thing. I'll finish that up. You guys can see that. And I'll put a list up of everything I used in today's broadcast. And you can see that um, a little bit later on today, this afternoon, sometime on Friday. Well, as always, thank you so much. We'll see you guys next week. Have a fantastic weekend. Have fun beating. And I'll talk to you soon.